In this session, we're going to take a look at doing some high-end simulated process color separations, working with some high-end art, which was actually designed by Gary Rohn. And you can find his gallery on deviantart.com. Some truly exceptional artwork, absolutely screen print ready, what we're working with here. And if you're looking for some great artwork, you might want to get in touch with Gary. Go ahead and close this here. And the file that we'll be separating will actually be this the Robin's Nest design, which he put together for a charter company in Hawaii. Go ahead and get a new page here. Next, I'll just go to Untitled here, too, and we'll work with this and our Inkseps importer from our advanced tools. To color separate, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring my browser back up. I'll just left click on my graphic, hold down and drag that into my page and release that. That'll open the file up in the Inkseps beta on our Inkseps.com website. And we'll go ahead and read the file here. And begin generating our separations, and they'll take just about a second. And here we have our color separations. We can compare our original just by turning that on. We can see that our color separations are absolutely accurate. Because this artwork is absolutely screen print ready, we won't need to make any adjustments whatsoever. So we'll come over here to download. I'll name this, I'll just call this Hawaii. And we'll go ahead and save that file. And we're working with a very large image here, which is approximately 14 by 15 inches at 300 DPI. So it'll take just a minute for Incepts to go through and package all the layers into individual color separations. Eight, and we can see nine, 10, 11, etc. I'll go ahead and select save and it'll instantaneously download the file. Go ahead and bring my Corel back up. I'll open up my Inkseps importer. I'll go to search. Go to my downloads folder because that's where it have gone from my browser when I downloaded it. I'll select open here with that selected. And I'll select import and rip. And that will bring my color separations directly into Corel draw for me from the zip file. Now here I'll have my halftone ripping options. So as I was actually going to screen print this, I would select a dot gain of at least 1.75 or 2.0. But since we're working in digital, we don't have to worry about dot gain. I'm going to change the LPI to 55 for all of the colors and the black and the white base and the white highlight because you're really better off printing at 55 or 65 LPI with simulated process and CMYK printing than you are at 45. And that's not to say that you can't print at 45 LPI, but if you're working with a higher LPI, you get a little bit more detail in your printing. Now with all these set to 55 LPI, I'm going to take my white base and I'm going to change the angle of that to 67. I'm going to give that a choke of two pixels and I'm going to change the white highlight also to 67. Be working with a hybrid of interlocking flamenco and rosette here. And I'm going to change the angle on the black to 67 and I'm going to interlock that. Now by doing the interlocking of the black with the white base that allows me to seal out all of the color from the t-shirt garment so I won't have any color contamination coming through my printing from the color of my garment. I'm going to go ahead and set up my interlocking from my other colors. I know I'm going to interlock my red. I know going through the visible spectrum of light the next color is yellow so I don't want to interlock that. The color after yellow would be green. Then I'd have my cyan, and I'd have my blue, and I'll go ahead and interlock that. So all of my ripping options are set up. I'll select all black here, and then click on halftone rip. And that will start the process of Incepts and Porter going through and setting up my separations as halftoned, ripped color separations based on pages in Corel Draw, and also give me a halftone preview. Once the Inksteps Importer is finished processing my color separations, I'll be at my halftone preview page. I'm going to go ahead and close my Inksteps Importer. I'll zoom in here and we can see the interlocking of our halftones based on color. And we can also see that our black and white are interlocked. Now I can see that my white seems to be stepping on some color here, so I'll go to my Object Manager. I'll come up here to my Highlight White and I'll just left click and bring that down below the red and release that. Now you can see some of that color vibrance come back. 
Now looking at this, one of the interesting things about interlocking our white base and our black is that we're able to seal out all of the substrate color. Now looking at the halftone preview here dealing with one bit images, Corel does not render them very well on the monitor. They don't look very good. But we're going to take a look at this so that we can see that we've sealed out all the color of the t-shirt by interlocking our white base and our black. I'll go ahead and create a rectangle here. I'll fill this with a gray and then I'll just right click and select order and go to back of the page and then if we zoom in we can see that there is no color showing through on our half tones that we've sealed out all of the color of the t-shirt. That gets rid of any possibility for color contamination in your process or similarly a process screen printing based on using just flamenco half toning as opposed to interlocking. I'm going to go ahead and select everything here as far as my, and actually I'll just do this here, I'll just come here and hold down shift and select all of these objects in my object manager. I'm just left clicking on these to select them all. I'm going to take this, I'm going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, go with 300 dpi, anti-aliasing turned on, and also a transparent background and select OK. Let that process. Once that's finished processing, you can see we still have some remnants of the look of the one bit images based on our transparencies here. So I'll go to bitmaps, blur, Gaussian blur, I'm going to go with one pixel, select OK, and here we can see our halftone preview. On page one, we can see our original, and then we can see our halftone preview here on page two. Now we can see that we're very close and very accurate. We're getting an excellent print here, absolutely accurate, using our interlocking and also the interlocking of our white base and our black. I just want to show you something here with the white base before we wrap up. I'm going to go to the white base. You can see that here. I'm going to come over here and click to the last page, which is my black. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to go all the way back here to the first page. I'll come to the white base. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Now remember, this was choked. So you will see some lines here where the choking was based on the black lines. But you can see where I zoom in here, there is no color coming through. There's no way that the substrate or the t-shirt color could come through and contaminate the color. And I can right click and change that black to say a green here. And you can see that interlocking happening. Very different than working with your flamenco dot on dot printing. You really don't want to print dot on dot because you're stepping on color and that changes the color so often. I remember years ago when I was screen printing simulated process, I'd be looking at things on the press and this color isn't coming out right and I couldn't understand why. Well, now I know. We can also see our choke here set up for our printing that we set up for our white base. I'll go ahead and delete that black, go back to our halftone preview, and then we could take a look at different colors for the background. I could come over here and fill this with, say, a blue. Well, actually, I want to have the rectangle selected, not the graphic. There we go. Select a blue, and we can see how that would look. Select a sky blue, and see how that would look, etc. So this is just a quick video on how to do your simulated process color separations using the Inkseps web application, and then your Inkseps importer for CorelDRAW for printing on colored or dark garments. And I can even look at this on a very dark gray, and you can see that there. So go ahead and wrap here, and we'll see you in our next session.